basically in this country there is no genuinely private broadcast i'm sorry to say but the reality is that there are no genuinely independent broadcasters in this country Free Talk, brought to you in proud partnership with the Frederick Newman Foundation and Heart and Soul TV and Radio. And as usual, I'm your host, Dara Blessed Mtlanga, bringing you the topical issues, answering the so what question in the political, social and economic discourse of Zimbabwe. Now, over the recent few years, the issue of Zimbabwean journalism has been thrown into question. Some have accused journalists and the media of polarizing the nation. Some have coined the word commissariat journalists, saying journalism is going to the dogs, or the dogs have come to journalism. We want to be able to discuss that and see the state of our media in Zimbabwe and how it can play a developmental role especially in the democracy and building of the nation of Zimbabwe. Now, to join us in this discussion and have this eagle eye or bird's eye view on the media industry in Zimbabwe is the person mandated by the Zimbabwean constitution to preside over media, to preside over issues of media, the Zimbabwe Media Commission Chairperson, Ruby Magosong. Now, thank you very much for joining us and welcome to the show. Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, blessed Mklanga Mbizi. Uh, if, I, if you may allow me to use the, the, the latter, the Mbizi bit, because it, that actually helps to bring you back to the issue of uh, nation, diversity, identity, plurality, and so on. We mm. all belong to the same space that is called Zimbabwe. And I want to thank you for inviting me or for your coming over for this conversation. Amazing. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, for accepting us in your space. But just as we open, we just want to hear from you. Um, since uh, becoming the ZMC Chair, what is your view of the Zimbabwean media space? Are we better than we were? Um, you know, before you came into office? Um, you are actually putting me into a corner there, listen. Because one of my gravest concerns, like you rightly pointed out in your introductory remarks, is the polarization that you find in the media. And believe you me, that continues to rage on depending on the alignment that the journalists actually have to the respective political parties and the establishment. And uh, that is a, a, an issue of serious concern 
Because what it does, blessed, busy, if you may allow me to use busy, yeah, I am busy, is that uh, with partisan approach to issues, already there is no room for being open minded and acceptance of other views from other quarters. That's number one. Number two, we put aside, we lay aside the facts on the ground that we have in order to push a certain, you know, view or point, agenda setting, you know, by the media itself, depending on what they want to push at a given time. And that in itself stands in the way of national development. I have noticed of late uh, the issue, you know, about elections. Almost every issue now is focusing on elections, focusing on uh, uh, MDCs, MDC, and you know, that kind of thing. And then also the reports or reportage on the outcome of COP26. You know, it's as if to say, oh, oh, celebrating, you know, failure and so on. And in the process, rather than fo focusing on the individuals, our political leaders somehow has removed our gaze from the broader national issues because we are chasing after the interests of political leaders and laying aside or setting aside what it is that Zimbabwe really needs and requires and demands at the moment for it to, you know, to for her to go forward. Mm. So you are right to say yes, the media has come to the or, or the dogs have come to the media. I, I want to take your attention, for instance, to like I did yesterday. If you remember our conversation yesterday, if you look at these uh, headlines on the front page, you know, MDC is pondering elections boycott, as they say, polls without reforms are futile, and then teachers down tools, outcry over anti NGOs bill. And then, you know, the list is endless, and then you go on, brace for more dire power cuts, and then Zim staring new price hikes wave, you know, because of uh, you know, elect electricity power cuts. So somehow, the media is driving, you know, negativity. That, 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 that's my, you may want to ask why I have these babies only, or already, I, I'm not biased, but this is what has been subscribed for, you know, at the moment. So these are the dailies that we are receiving. And uh, which takes me to another issue concerning the media houses themselves. They are aware that uh, ZMC is supposed to be monitoring, isn't it? And they, uh, or they used to deposit a copy of their publications, daily publications, but they have since stopped. ZMC has to subscribe. You can imagine in their numbers, the number of, you know, daily, dailies that we have in the country, and ZMC has to subscribe to Chronicle, subscribe to their subscribe. It's a huge cost. Mm. Yeah. They, they also subscribe to you at a license fee. <laughs> but if you look at the license fee, uh, this is a license fee for five years, isn't it? And you look at the inflation, look at the inflation rate. <laughs> How much or how many copies can we afford to buy at the at that uh, you know hmm. escalating cost? Yeah, but but you 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 mentioned these issues of the headlines that are um, as you say alarming at, at times and very negative. But would you have a situation where the media then creates news that does not exist? Because if teachers down tools. If the MDCs are pondering elections boycott, what should the media then do about it? Uh, I, I, I like your person, uh, Bizi, because the news that we are getting almost uh, on a daily basis focus just on the urban centers. It's a if uh, Zimbabwe is a rather flower and machine. And everything else that is happening out there, there's nobody taking responsibility to report, to bring that information to the fore, so that people can actually see that there are other activities going on out there. So 
perhaps that explains the limitations now you know that we have in terms of reportage by the by the journalists but of course i know you're going to say oh yes of course we don't have fuel we don't have resources to go out there and so on uh, I, I don't know whether you now have regional reporters or not or because of the course uh, you have cut down so everything now depends on the few you know individuals who are in the urban centers so mm. as a result we end up that's why we end up having these you know skilled you know reports in that way but people want the want the how part the immediacy the p things that touch to their lives for instance um politics is dominating zimbabwean social uh, political discourse in this country so anything else outside that is not found traction would you buy to that idea of course in my city here our city here is for political we now have these liberties to sit and have these conversations because we are now in an independent Zimbabwe where previously would, we wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't be the chairperson of the Zimbabwe Media Commission, which is the creation of the constitution. So obviously, yes, politics does touch, you know, on people's daily lives, but it would be interesting to also interrogate and investigate and, you know, explore, you know, other activities taking place out there where the majority of the people are, rather than focusing on the urban, you know, urban centers and urban setups only. Our news is basically or mostly urban, urban centers. Mm -hmm. And I think in a way it does uh, shift the focus from whatever else is happening, you know, in the outer parts of the country and restrict our gaze and our story to the politicians in the, in the urban centers mm -hmm. alone. Someone would say that this is a result of an authoritarian place in Zimbabwe where the press has been used to, especially by the state, to entrench power. So this is what is now permeating around the media space. I, I, I like, I, I like uh, your reference to entrenched power by the state. I'm not sure whether the state actually dictates what the daily news is to publish on a daily basis, what the standard is to publish, what the news day has to is to you know to publish unless if you are referring to you know to the you know to the state uh, you know owned uh, media houses the the herald for instance or the sunday mail perhaps but whereas you know all these other public dailies are concerned I, I i doubt whether it's because of the entrenched control by the state it's a question of choice uh, our media houses, our publishers, our journalists uh, are looking for the low hanging fruits in the sense of what ta tabloidization of some of the events, the activities taking place, the happenings taking place out there at the expense of actually going out to investigate, interrogate and give some balanced story of what actually is happening. If at all there's any censorship from the state, if at all there's any censorship from the state, it is actually self-imposed by our journalists. Mm -hmm. It's self-censorship because we actually have uh, some media reforms taking place. We, we have Freedom of Information Act. We have the Zimbabwe Media Commission Act. We have the Constitution itself. It's very clear, Section 61 on freedom of the media. So why people restrict themselves when it comes to reporting is anybody's guess unless somebody is paying them somewhere to pursue certain lines of argument and certain you know certain topics mm. really? the, in my view uh, uh, and uh, contrary to the previous you know previous regime whereby we had the bombings uh, the bombing of uh, the, the, the the daily news I have never experienced anything else or I have never heard of anything else in the recent years. And that takes us back to the early 2000s, isn't it? And since then, yeah. And I has been reformed 
that are the journalists and uh, people generally are uncomfortable with. So with those reforms, I don't understand why these are happening about repression, about state control, when there is, uh, you know, freedom of information, we have freedom of the media, and we have the Zimbabwe Media Commission itself being there to mm. encourage uh, and to monitor and also to ensure, you know, that uh, the media enjoys its free space. Mm. We have not received any, any media house, for instance, coming to say we have suffered repression in this manner, one, two, three, or any complaints with Zimbabwe Media Commission. We haven't. We, 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 we saw the editor of the Herald leaving office because he had chosen to lead with the story other than the return of the president into the country. Uh, this was Joram Nyati, one of the shortest serving editors of the Herald. We also had the then acting editor, Chauna Zindoga, of the Herald complaining that he was forced out because he refused or he was resisting this follow the minister, follow the politician approach of reporting at the Herald. Now, Aren't you concerned about such allegations and such um, issues happening, especially in the state-controlled and public-owned media, which is supposed to be saving the interests of all Zimbabweans? I, I want to thank you on that uh, report about Joram Yat. Uh, the, the beauty of it is that uh, we classmates at some point. So, yeah just as, as an aside but when it comes to coverage and this is a state-owned you know state-owned uh, media house uh, not that we have uh, not that the state is appropriated and pocketed you know the the the, the, the media house itself I, I cannot go into each media houses uh, editorial policy it's entirely up to each media house how their editorial policies are managed. So if Joram had been, you know, can I say, had been trained or had been, I, I'm looking for a word, inducted, yes, into the editorial policy of the Herald and he chose to go, you know, otherwise or to do otherwise, that's not for me to comment. That's for the you know, the likes of Tommy Stolle, you know, to comment on, and not to Dimango Shonga. And this thing actually happened when Dimango Shonga has been you know, appointed as a, as, as a commissioner at the Zimbabwe Media Commission. But let me hasten to point out that uh, the Zimbabwe Media Commission does respect, you know, your editorial policies. Mm -hmm. We don't want to micromanage. ZMC does not go into micromanage, you know, editorial policies of either you know, the print media, electronic media, or any, you know, media, uh, media sector, you know, for that matter. What we are concerned about is the respect and upholding of the Constitution and driving the national agenda other than person-driven, you know, agendas. That's our concern mm. as, a, as a ZMC. What do you do in the instance where, for instance, there was a high court ruling in Mashingo? that the Herald stifles voices, dissenting voices, and that is against its constitutional mandate as a public media. What do you do when such things happen as ZMC? Do you then weigh in to say we want to see reforms in line with certain uh, uh, court judgments or in line also with the constitution? I, I, I'm not very clear on how the Herald can stifle media in Mashingo because the Herald is... No, it was a high court, uh, high court ruling that was done in Mashingo. Oh, I see. Yes. Any specific case? The case was that uh, um, civil society approached the high court in Mashingo accusing the Herald of uh, favorably covering ZANU PF and the ruling uh, packed it in during the 2018 general elections. And that judgment was against the Herald, because the court found that it was not performing within its uh, the constitutional uh, ambit 
of a public media. Okay, uh, I, I wouldn't want to contradict a, a court ruling uh, because we are governed and driven by the framework set by the same legal principles. If it's freedom of the media, then it has to be freedom of the media. If it is access to information, then it has to be access to information, irrespective of our diversity and uh, differences of opinion and differences of uh, political persuasion. We, we are there to support an inclusive, all-inclusive you know, media, especially in line with the principle of leaving no community behind and leaving no one behind. So if we become selective in our reporting, it means we are compromising certain communities and information is a public good. And as a public good, people can only make informed decisions if they have accurate information, balanced information, and information that is delivered to them timiously as well. So whatever the judge you know, found out and whatever his ruling you know, was, uh, it, it has to be upheld in line with the, in line with the Constitution, which is, which is the supreme law of the mm. land. Yeah, so my but, question. Uh, but going back to, to 2018, uh, I, I may hasten to say that uh, where you are saying a state-owned media, private media, it actually takes us back to this issue of uh, our media operating in dichotomies. You have the privately owned media, uh, you know, stays supporting the running with the you know agenda of the opposition state-owned media running with the, with the establishment. Which polarization is, is, uh, is weird? Which polarization would not take the country forward? We are saying we are in this together. We share this space together and we need to disseminate information that is accurate, that is timious, that is factual for the good of the people for whom that information would have been generated anyway. How do we balance, ma'am? Um, private media space would say that we are in this for, bu for business. Yes. Yes. And, and they would want to ensure that for them to remain afloat, they've got to have audience. And the audiences are buying politics. How then do you balance the public good and the business aspect, especially for the private media that does not receive taxpayers' money to remain afloat? Uh, this, you want to put me into a corner and you want to... <laughs> 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 Start on the media, yes. You know, information has to be balanced. It has to cover, you know, almost every aspect and every uh, critical aspect that concerns, you know, the development of the country. And it takes me back to this issue that I pointed out earlier on. And you actually hinted and pointed out that uh, politics is what drives, you know, people's imagination. That is why people are yearning for and so on. And we are here sharing this space on, the, on account of results of some political, you know, political achievements, political moves and so on. Fine, that's true, that's correct. But at the same time, yes, the Herald can be run or can be assisted, you know, through to run through taxpayers' money. And you are saying these other dailies, the opposition, the private media, sorry, do not enjoy such support. Uh, the balance is for us to be honest. How do we tell our Zimbabwean story? Because we know how to tell the Zimbabwean story is private media and also state media, state only media. Perhaps what you may want to appreciate is that what the private media is leaving out is what the state media is running with. And what the state media is, is leaving out is what the private media is running with. So there's a balance there? Balance in terms of uh, in terms of the private or privately owned and the state media, I cannot say there's a balance because let's say I mean I come from wherever I come from out there, and the only paper that I have access to happens to be the daily daily news or news day or the Herald. What it means is that on a daily basis I'm getting skewed information 
and that information is not accurate, which means I'm not going to make informed decisions because these have decided to be partisan, which is what we are saying as journalists, we can and we should we choose. It's a question of choice, actually. We can actually do it, you know, come up with balanced reporting, balanced stories, and still, you know, make our appeal in terms of uh, making, keeping the businesses running. We can still, you'll be shocked. Let's say a new player, you know, comes on board and takes this balanced, you know, approach, mm -hmm. covering state and also covering the, covering the opposition. You would be amazed, covering, you know, whatever other private, you know, information, marginalized communities that have been left out there in the cold. We'd be amazed at how it would perform. Mm. But so it's a question of identifying where the gaps are, which is my cry, identifying where the gaps are so that at least we bring on board these issues that will force politicians to put, you know, to do better, if I may use, you know, that rather than looking at personalities, let us focus on issues. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's where my personal, you know, problem lies. We are chasing after, you know, Nelson Chamisa, like I pointed out yesterday. If there's no Nelson Chamisa, then there's no MDC. Are we saying the whole of Zimbabwe, honestly, is focusing on just an individual? If there's no, you know, a certain personality, it means everyone else, you know, doesn't exist. It ceases to be Zimbabwe then, and as a result of that kind of partisan approach in our reporting, we are creating little gods, demigods. That, are, that then end up not being open and uh, embracing, open-minded and embracing views from other quarters because the media itself has created these little worlds who cannot be challenged. So it means in that regard, the media has failed us and there's certainty that is how polarization then actually gets entrenched. Mm -hmm. So it's not the state now that is oppressing but it's because of the certain, you know, approaches, certain views, certain perceptions, certain opinions that certain media houses, certain, you know, journalists actually choose to run with. And as a result, they ignore, you know, the other sections that could actually take, you know, away the prejudices that we now see and this, you know, closed perceptions mm. on certain personalities. And some, some say that the media is just the mirror of society. And what we are seeing in the media are symptoms, are symptomatics of a sick society that has glorified individuals for a very long time. Entrenched in Robert Gabriel Mugabe from 1980 until he was ousted of, from power. Now entrenched again in the strong man of uh, Emerson Dambuzo Mnangagwa, our president, uh, once he got into power. Is it the media or it's our society? I'm sorry to say that it is the media that is pushing those images. Remember, the storytelling is the storyteller who has the control and the means to maneuver the story in order to meet the national agenda. But then if the storyteller deliberately takes a certain line, you know, in a certain course, obviously, you know, they keep on, you know, perpetuating this larger than life, you know, images. And it doesn't occur well for anybody. Yeah, I, 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 I made reference to, you know, to this, uh, whatever, um, uh, MDCs. It's the one on top. It's the one, yes. MDCs pondering elections, boycott, as they say, polls without reforms are futile. And who are the MDCs on the front page? Nelson Chamisa and Morgan Comich. As far as you know, this, those are the, believe you me, once you keep on, you know, repeating a certain, a certain, can I say, a certain, once you keep on repeating using the same image, the same metaphor, the same symbol, that is what gets entrenched in the minds of, the, of your audiences and readers. So I can actually equally say, it's not the... The, the, the media is not reflecting or what is, is not reflecting what is going on in the society. The media has set for itself an agenda 
because they are driving or they wish to drive you know certain you know agendas that the, the nation then are forced to imbibe people have, are forced to imbibe what they read it comes out today in this format the next day the same image the same symbol is repeated the following day this month the, and the next month you know day in day out Good. so at the end of the day yes you may say yes uh, the media is reflective of society but i choose to I, I choose to believe the opposite that it is the media that is setting the agenda for the society so so without necessarily putting words in your mouth but drawing from what you have said the state is the one that is controlling what the people are feeding on because it is the major stakeholder and controller of the media in Zimbabwe. I, I, I would want to beg to differ there because these are not state, state owned. Are they? But they're not the major. The major, if you talk about the major, you talk of Zim Papers, it's the biggest media organization in the country. Then you then go to radio and television, you find we've, got had, we've had one television station mm -hmm. for a very long time owned by the state and controlled by the state, that ZBC. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the radio, you have a number of radio stations in their different formats, mm -hmm. all owned by the state. By the state. Yes. Uh, I, I may want to differ there in the sense that if you watch Z, ZBC or ZTV, the, actually the reason why people choose to subscribe, some people you know, actually never watch you know, ZBC or ZTV. Some people never watch because they're saying, ah, they are talking agriculture, they are talking this, they're talking. It's not entertainment. It's not entertaining enough. So I, I, I cannot say it's the state that is forcing down these, you know, sentiments or perceptions down people's throats. No, I beg to differ, you know, on that one. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, because if my, my, my point would have been if they are. If, if the state has the biggest footprint in the media mm -hmm. and the media was the one that sets the agenda, then the state would then have an upper hand in terms of setting that agenda, who did it? Of course. Uh, uh, I wouldn't want to venture into that terrain, so to speak, other than saying as far as the state is concerned, we have seen the reforms that promote media plurality and diversity, uh, that promote media development, and that also promote uh, you know, just uh, an environment whereby entrepreneurs can actually develop themselves without anybody gagging them you know, to follow a specific path. So it's, it's entirely... And uh, where reportage is concerned, I, 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 I wouldn't want to to hide the fact that when somebody, when the president has gone to COP26 and on the sidelines, he meets uh, Boris Johnson, Prime Minister of the, you know, Britain. He meets, uh, you know, President John Biden of the United States. He meets, uh, you know, the president of, uh, he meets the Secretary General of the, of the UN for diplomacy's sake. I, I, in my view, that's a huge score, given the the, the stiff, you know, stance that uh, you know the West had adopted, you know, against Zimbabwe for the past, you know, almost two decades. So for me, that's a that's a plus. And why should the state-owned media not report on that, uh, you know, positive state, positive step? So it's it's not about. Uh, in my view, when there have been moves and movements and uh, uh, efforts to bring back the whole issue about re-engagement and participation of the remember we are focusing on the nation here, we are focusing on Zimbabwe, both at local and international level. So why should we just be bogged down with the, you know, differences, the politicians at home, uh, factionalism in the political parties, uh, all political parties. Is that not the role of the media to make sure yeah. that when people vote, they then know exactly who they are voting for? Because if they gloss around the issues, then they would vote unaware 
of the emblemishes of the people that they're putting in power. May I hasten to bring you back to the issue of the politicians who be campaigning and for parliamentary positions or for leadership. The onus is on them to, to campaign. Of course, they can use different uh, media outlets and different media you know, publications. Uh, we are encouraging, as the TMC, uh, you know, uh, community newspapers. In fact, that's where the majority of the people are. Community newspapers in the local languages, that's how they reach out to the people. But no, we all want to use ZBC, we all want to use ZTV. And how many watch ZBC for quite some time? I don't want to lie, I've missed some of the news meetings because of blackouts. So we cannot lie or pretend that it's, it's the state owned media that is driving people. There are other forces, larger forces, that may actually be compelling people to adopt certain stances or certain views. But I'm pleading with you this to encourage your your colleagues you know to come out of community newspapers if that's where you came from why not nurture them and encourage them to, to to grow and develop those because that's how we reach out to the many communities that that have been left out that have been marginalized by the mainstream you know media in any case my copy is Mangalano Soshika Kunyamunga my copy is Mangani Herald and Soshika Kuchipinge you know that kind of thing yeah, but if we have community newspapers there to try and direct touch with developments within their own local communities, in their own local languages, and they know what they want best within their local communities in terms of development, and hence this, uh, can, can I say, this uh, conversation and, the, and the, the, the dialogue between our MPs now and the, main, the, 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 the government when it comes to the, to the development agendas. So if our MPs are so narrow-minded as to want to use the news, the Herald every day, obviously Herald, like you rightly point out, of course the one my offer is just like this what's here. And they cannot just print my papers as now at the end of the day. So Nyema comes newspapers, if I may reinforce, in Yaya why a kakosha? We make an assumption in Uti, everyone should be able to invest in English, everyone should be able to buy or to afford, you know, buying the newspaper. But they don't. Arukusha, Maria Kutenga, Kuendesa Kuchigayona, Maria Kutenga, Chin, the Herald, our thing. But can I add my community newspapers from their respective communities in their local languages? So, this is the MP, we don't get all your country, we don't get all your punish, we don't get all your punishment, we don't get all your punishment. Obviously, there will be an interest, there will be motivation. Mm. You talk about um, this aspect. Let me bring you to the economy, um, which is, as you mentioned earlier, with the, the overheads and inflation, is, 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 uh, is there any plan? from government through ZMC to ensure that the media in Zimbabwe uh, with us the storm that we are currently facing, which has seen a lot of media houses trim stuff drastically and also limit their reach and service to the people of Zimbabwe. Uh, for that one, I may not be in a position to comment on behalf of government. I think our Minister of Information uh, would be a would be better place you know, to, to comment to answer on that one. But uh, let me hasten to point out that uh, uh, people would put their money where their mouths are. If they know put in the kind of water, we are going to get clinic a kilometer or two kilometers away. Who be persuaded? Oh. Yeah. But you can person anything, any incentive, honestly, why would they vote? They vote for a parliamentarian who appears today, of course, a political reporter, I'm not, and only goes back to those communities three, four years down the line because they want, you know, their votes again. Our people may not be as gullible as we may want to believe. Everyone wants to, to live 
uh, a, a comfortable life or a life that uh, ensures their dignity and survival. So this is a private opinion, just a commonsensical opinion. I, I would want to quote some of that. You know, that's Julius Malema for you. Promise them that will give you a t-shirt, will give you food. Only then can our people come. But w they don't know that if they don't give their vote, it means they won't have the school that they want, they won't have the clinic that they want, they won't have the next facility that they want, because they're not giving the support where they should be giving it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But how does the, how, within its mandate, the ZMC, does it have a mandate to ensure that the media is vibrant and is it playing or meeting that mandate? Uh, you mean media in the in the classical sense of journalism? Is that what you are looking at? Because media now has plurality, mm -hmm. and uh, we have so many industries, so many sectors actually, not industries. Uh, sectors now covering the media as an as an as an, as an industry. So we need to develop mainstream media in Zimbabwe, but at the same time also encourage uh, our entrepreneurs to venture into the other you know, media sectors and uh, develop you know, the media itself. It's not ZMC. I, 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 let me emphasize that ZMC is not the one that goes out to plant that community newspaper. But ZMC can support the entrepreneurs in terms of uh, registration, in terms of uh, capacitation through workshops, development, you know, workshops and so on. That's how ZMC comes in. And uh, I, I, would, I would be lying to say ZMC, Chakupa Maria, Kuti and all those established, community newspaper, but we can subsidize, of course, my, my license and fees and so on. But guess what? Our entrepreneurs and politicians are not taking advantage of the community newspapers. Imagine they want to campaign and my, my business people, my entrepreneurs are using the local languages and are placing their adverts. Uh, it's, it's all about a uh, uh, you know, strategy that you use in order to attract attention to yourself. They are not placing those, uh, you know, adverts in the community newspapers where the people are. Then how would the people know? So we and we now have a two-pronged, you know, trust whereby you have our local community newspapers where we carry my adverts and it for the entrepreneurs, and at the same time, the politicians and entre entrepreneur are also you know, spreading their, their agenda, you know, and reaching out to those people. I Herald, Chronicle, News Day, as and when, or the standard, as and when they give us space. It becomes, you know, I, I think it's a question of actually turning and uh, the way that we do business. And perhaps as part of reform, in quotation marks, if we may encourage ZMC, we'd like to encourage a situation whereby anybody, let's say anybody's advertising uh, for a tender nyaminyan or machine in the Herald, would actually be, would be happy to advocate for a situation whereby uh, the Herald would be the last point of call. Let your advert appear first in that community newspaper and then come to the Herald. After seven, because the ten day bus are put where we talk about the Yaminian, they could talk machine. They don't trust me because that don't push it anyway. And at the same time, what it means is we are giving a double, dealing a double blow in that community. Ten day cool, comment to call, they could come here out here out, right? I should be called. So business, the rush for now, which can never look out, my communities, the Coco, Rapid on a business, best narrow for poor Harari, and we end up in perpetuating this inequities. I, I think we'll try and uh, push hard for that you know, policy mm -hmm. you know, shift the framework so that people can actually you know, reach out to the 
Yeah. That kind of, uh, you know, Let us look at the advent of social media uh, as a new media platform, and um, this is mostly an unregulated space. It is, and uh, if I may quickly you know, come in on that one to say social media, yes, uh, it's very good. I want to assure you that uh, during this time of my COVID lockdown and so on, my colleagues and uh, uh, my, my, my own children have benefited a lot or a great deal or tremendously through WhatsApp groups, you know, with their lecturers and also amongst themselves as peers. So in that regard, they've used the social media responsibly. I belong to a certain to certain groups, you know, that have issues to do with the communities. We are using WhatsApp groups to disseminate information, but I have problems with uh, seasoned or senior uh, active activists or journalists or activists who are actually exploiting and manipulating social media to send out uh, inaccurate images and inaccurate stories about uh, this country. Uh, let me not hide you know, my point here. Uh, two weeks ago, there was a story you know, circulating on Twitter, so that's part of the social media, uh, originated by Hoko Chinon about a woman who gave birth you know, on a road, you know, and the comment was that, I, I, I have it, and I, I couldn't open it now. The comment was that it's because of uh, poor health infrastructure in Zimbabwe. Only for somebody to remind him that that story or that event or incident actually happened in Ghana. So here's somebody who is importing images from elsewhere, negative images from elsewhere transposing them and claiming that these activities are taking place in Zimbabwe. I was very disappointed because in that story there was no name of that mother who gave birth by the roadside. There was no name of the male nurse and those other two women who are holding this cloth to shield you know, this woman who is giving birth. No name. And there's no location either. Where did, did, did this take place? All those details are missing. So that is how irresponsible some of our journalists, whom activists have become. For whatever reason, they know better or they know best. But at the end of the day, this is placing, we are actually placing the nation by the wayside, and then we push and prioritize whatever agendas in their views and perceptions we want to want to push forward to the detriment of the very country that we claim to love. Mm -hmm. So social media, yes, it's very good, but people have been using it irresponsibly. So whilst we, you know, the, the constitution is very clear about freedom of the media, freedom of information, the onus is on the Zimbabweans themselves to use that uh, space responsibly. Mm. Yeah. And at present, apart from apart from the examples that you have you have given, what challenges has the ZMC had in terms of um, information on social media? Um, we cannot. Oh. We are yet, as a country, to regulate social media. If it all can regulate it, I don't know whether Zimbabwe can be able to regulate you know, social media. But I suppose that falls you know, within a domain of another ministry, the cyber security, you know, and so on. That's a, a totally different uh, ministry from, from ourselves. But at the same time, we are not shying away from pointing out some of these anomalies that we find out or that we find in the, in the social media. As journalists, yes, we may not have the means and the resources to go out there and source news, source information, but our sources are our sources credible. How credible are they? 
I, I call to mind uh, one reporter who ended up twisting, you know, the interview that he had had with uh, the Minister of Defence at the passing on of uh, Dr. Ellen Boratimba. You know, all those kind of uh, maneuvers, twisting of uh, information and uh, subjecting, you know, certain individuals to certain pressures when are the chairman and then you report or pretend to be very sympathetic, you are paying your condolences and you are actually fishing out, you know, whatever you want to fish out. I, I, recently there's another one in the UK, you know, purporting to be... Is it? Was it Simba Simba Neuta? And Madam, uh, 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 can you hear me? Um, uh, who is this one? I am the former Minister of Finance, Chinamasa. I'm Chinamasa. Uh, uh, can you make sure you? Go? I want to thank you for blocking this one. And in the meantime, is creating all this, impersonating people. That's how bad we have become. Oh, that's how law we stoop in terms of coming up with dirty tricks to push our our agendas. I don't think our people can refuse with information if we approach them, if we have, you know, some some relationship with them, which is why I continuously talk or harp about community newspapers. People will respect it. And that's how they have remained networked. But as my journalists, as my entrepreneurs, as my politicians, at times we overlook and downplay the importance of these community leaders who may actually help in driving our own agendas. Mm -hmm. The journalists themselves have uh, set up the Voluntary Media Council of Zimbabwe to try and push for professionalism and ethical journalism. Um, do you relate with the Voluntary Media Council of Zimbabwe and how is that relationship, if, it's, if, if any? I'm busy. I want to let you know that the Zimbabwe Media Commission, an apex body that is interested in advocacy, and uh, because media permeates across society, there's no way by which we can pretend that I can deal with him busy and uh, ignore, you know, the next person, whatever organization, whatever sector, whatever association that is in the media or that has anything to do with the media. The Times is ready to engage, is ready to have dialogue, is ready to have conversations, as long as this is going to drive, you know, the media industry. That, that's, that's all we are for. But uh, if I may quickly come back to the Zimbabwe you know, Media Council, they have uh, introduced oh, a, a so-called media practitioners bill uh, in which, uh, in which uh, bill they actually use up, you know, some of the, some of the part of the mandate really of the ZMC is stipulated in the in the constitution but i want you to know that we are having dialogue on this this issue to do with the uh, co-regulation there are misunderstandings there are gray areas that we need to iron out as to how that can actually be you know worked on and th that's the ZMC for you we are not uh, uh, averse to dialogue and conversation no otherwise without those practitioners without those sectors in the you know in the media then ZMC would serve no purpose at all it cannot be there for itself it's there for the media industry mm -hmm. yes yeah some have argued that journalists would rather regulate themselves um like what the doctors do like what the lawyers do instead of, ha of having a uh, government uh, w in which they watch over appointing commissioners to look over them thank you so much about uh, I, I like the example that we have used the, this whole idea of self-regulation self-governance and so on have you heard about the Zimbabwe Law Society you have heard about the Zimbabwe Law Society have you ever checked uh, the kind of mandate that they have in monitoring the training of uh, you know of our legal so-called 
legal minds in this country, even the issue of issuance of practicing certificates. So it has that mandate to, to be a watchdog of the standards, training, practicing, and bring everyone, you know, back into line. I don't understand why the journalists should not want to be reminded to fall into line when you have the Zimbabwe Law Society actually doing the same. Yeah, but the Zimbabwe Law Society... Mm. Um, doing they, the same to, this, to, the yes. legal, to the legal, you know. Yeah, they, they do that, but they, yes. they drive their mandate from the lawyers themselves, from yeah. the legal profession itself. Government only comes in to put one or two people... Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much for bringing that up. I, I want to remind you of the polarization that was there prior to the new constitution 2013. Because this is a creation, the Zimbabwe Media Commission was actually created by the parliamentarians with the contributions from the very sectors in order to have oversight and reduce you know, some of the anomalies that were are happening. I, I want to, to give an example. Ye kunzi, ye my long sleeves, short sleeves and so on. But where are the long sleeves, where are the short sleeves and so many, you know, waters and so on and uh, fake, you know, reporting with your source. No, I cannot disclose my source, but my source is inside. How do we authenticate? So in terms of governance, certainly there's need for that, uh, you know, oversight role of the Zimbabwe Media Commission. Self-regulation, I want you to know that ZMC has never barred any sector from having their own associations and coming up with their own courts. If anything, ZMC is actually waiting for your courts, you know, to be deposited with the commission so that at the end of the day, from the courts that you deposit, then we can come up with the, 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 the umbrella code of ethics for our industry. So nobody has stopped your associations. You make mention of the doctor's association, the nurses' association, but are you aware that even if those associations exist, they still have to fall under the Health Professions Council of Zimbabwe? Why should there be a Health Professions Council if these you know, other small associations are attributing their own right? There's need for an oversight, certainly, definitely. Yeah. Okay, my 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 point was that while these journalists do not dis disagree with an uh, umbrella body for the oversight, they want to be able to directly have influence and in, on who sits on that board, instead of having the same people that they are supposed to oversee deciding who sits there. So you cannot be then. Which, which board? For instance, the ZMC. Uh, for an information, mm -hmm. the ZMC was not appointed or nominated by the by the government. By parliament. By par there was an advert, mm -hmm. you know, for people to submit nominations. Rubima Goshongo did not nominate herself. Rubima Goshongo was not nominated by ED or by Chinamasa or by Tokozani Kupi. It's those nominations are coming from the public, they're coming from civil society, they're coming from different sectors within the media, you know, industry itself, media fraternity itself. And mm -hmm. all the parliaments, the parliamentarians did was just to deal with the nominations that were placed in their, in their basket. So it's not them who imposed, but people made choices, which brings me back to the issue at Tirukutaurayakuti, People at times miss, you know, because it's Jirimu Herald, as this language, yeah. Warku Misa, because it's Jirimu, this paper, because of partisan, partisanship that we have developed, you know, over the years. Yeah, in a polarization, the actual media, you know, sector itself. People miss out on certain information, very certain, you know, critical, critical information, because we have, uh, these blinkers, Canary Herald and Dwayne, Canary News Day and Dwayne and Dwayne. And at the end of the day, we are compromising ourselves. So mm. it's not the government that imposed the, the board on the industry. It's in the constitution and nominations were called for, and it's for a certain term, uh, not perpetually. You know, they were not here in perpetuity. <laughs>
Then I, I, coming as as we I close. Help sure, sure, certain. When you turn your complaint, you put your head on Jama, you know, uh, last week on on Thursday. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I didn't see any any of this, you know, dailies discussing, you know, the Jama issue. Yet, mommy, never nominates, never winners from across, you know, the whole all the media houses that we have. No, what were they? What were those winners actually? You know, what did they write about? What they cover? Nobody took any interest. If anything, drama is just something that is on the calendar. It comes, it goes, and we pack it by the wayside. Yet the very journalists are accusing the government of repression when they don't take up issues that directly concern their own profession and the manner of uh, you know of reporting. So at the end of the day, it's the journalists who are shooting themselves in the foot. This one won from uh, New Zealand, this one won from uh, the Chronicle, this one won from uh, Newsday, this one. You know, what exactly, what were the merits of those articles that won? No, we don't engage, you know. Because the great number of prejudices, the number of misconceptions or my perceptions that we want to follow through. So at the end of the day, we are actually shortchanging ourselves, or we are shortchanging our readers as journalists. Mm. Now, now as, as we close, the allegation that journalists have become guns for hire um, is from where you sit presiding over the media. What is your view to that statement? I am um, actually deeply concerned, if I may be honest. I, 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 earlier on, I made reference to the story by approaching on the social media. He's one of those uh, journalists whom people look up to and actually follow up on, on Twitter. And uh, believe you me, whatever story you paint about this country is not going to be confined within the parameters of the geographical framework of this country. It goes regional, it goes international. What images are we sending about this country? So in my view, yes, journalists have become you know, guns for hire. Because whatever story and how they, 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 they produce and how they package it and how they disseminate whatever, you know, using whatever symbols, using whatever language they actually use, inflammatory language or peaceable language or conciliatory language, it does have a role to play in terms of bringing you know, people together or actually creating divisions. So yes, journalists can be guns for hire, which is why I'm appealing to our journalists and the media houses to find a conciliatory way rather than taking these sharp, sharply polarized you know, positions. If the Herald were to say, uh, this book is, is blue, yeah, I'm going to say this book is blue. The Daily News or the News Day is going to say, no, this book is not blue, it is black. Can, can you say, I am doing this deliberately. Mm -hmm. yeah? The Herald has said it is blue and News Day ensures that irrespective of the facts, no, it's not blue, it's black. And that, you know, those contentions, you know, keep on, you know, permeating and going through to society. That's how our society ends up being divided and polarized. So my appeal to the media uh, as, a, as a fraternity, as a society, as an industry, is for us to use our freedoms responsibly and bring, you know, harmony you know, mm -hmm. within our communities. If it's a question of development, you know, agendas. I, I, I may hasten to point out there, at times our politicians actually would wink the political leaders, pretending that all is well. I went to St. Mary's on, on, on Monday, coming from my brother's funeral, and uh, the first lady was in St. Mary's last week, addressing people on Nangai and so on. You know, these traditional ways of communicating, raising, you know, the boy child, the girl child, and doing work, taking responsibilities within the home, and so on. And from uh, that's, uh, that's the Evans, Evans, 
Ichiwuya, right up to Sibu. It's well tired. Because we are changing the channel now, to go to St. Mary's. Pawakango Gumira, Dopaka Gumira, Ochin, to Gadzero. Whom do we blame there? So it's our politicians who are now, and councillors, local authorities, who are painting this glossy picture and hiding information from uh, the leadership so that certain, uh, certain projects perhaps can be followed through or can be taken up in order to make improvements. But we keep away this information from them. And our journalists, which is where I want to come to, are not going back to report on these issues. Wakangu cover story ya my Jaffa Shapiri Raipabu. The context and the environment my tirwa, you know, that gathering, that meeting to my conditions of living a camera say, journalist and abasa now camera ya kiripana, iripana my and shatodin, shatopira. So at the end of the day, our journalists have failed us. That, that's my personal view. Our journalists need to investigate, need to interrogate, need to explore and bring to the fore some of the major issues that need to be improved, that need to be worked on, that need to be covered. Rather than following, you know, you follow this, uh, you know, political leader, even if I can call Sora, we report with the Adina. In fact, it brings me to a very stupid story that I found in the news, I think. Hans the President Biden, or Biden, farted. I know. <laughs> it is, it's not a story, you know. It's not a story to come. Could you cop 26 and somebody is falling to me? But they are beaten. Oh my God. <laughs> That's how narrow and myopic, you know, our journalistic times have become. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, more issues of substance that we can actually cover in order to have conversations and dialogue and to cover my gaps eye in terms of driving our nation forward. Maybe your last words as the person who um, presides over the media industry in Zimbabwe, what would be your last words to the publishers, the owners of media space the, and the journalists? Thank you so much for, for, that, uh, for the invitation of that uh, nature. I want to actually apologize that I'm still to visit our publishing houses. I'm still to meet our editors. I'm still to meet, you know, most of these. Of course, I met, you know, a few representatives just as a way of getting to meet them and getting to know them. But I didn't meet everyone. We haven't met everyone as a commission. We're actually on a plan in fact we have a plan a schedule to actually visit your your publishing houses have discussions conversations so that at least we uh, can actually you know get to know one another but more specifically uh join hands in order to drive the media industry forward so the media commission is not going to work in isolation it actually works together with those practitioners who are in the in the media industry because the media for the media industry itself to grow it's not only the regulations the, the regulations are there to help with governance issues but the people who actually grow the industry are out there and we need to keep that uh, you know can we say cordial relationship between the apex board itself and the players who are in the who are in the in the field in the sector well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you uh, very much for joining us here on, on the free talk and sharing your views about the media industry. Now, is we ha you have had hours with, in conversation with Madam uh, Chairperson Ruby Magoshongwe here at the Zimbabwe Media Commission. And we're talking about the role of the media, the polarization that the media has caused in this country and its effects on development because the media as we all know and as we should all know is supposed to be a tool for social change a tool for development and a tool that keeps democracy alive instead of dividing and killing nations now this was the free talk with me your host as always dara blessed mtlanga now this is the free talk this is the place that we have alternative views. This is the 
free space for free speech here on Free Talk in partnership with the Frederick Norman Stuftan. As always, thank you for joining us. This was the Free Talk, proudly brought to you in proud partnership with the Frederick Newman Foundation and Heart and Soul TV and Radio. We believe that dialogue is the crux of development. When people talk to each other, when people listen to each other, development happens. On Free Talk, we believe in political dialogue, economic dialogue, and social dialogue. Everybody must be heard. Everybody has a right to be heard. Free talk, talking that moves nation. Free talk, talking that makes a difference. This is the free talk.